so now that we have a better understanding of what this Google Play Games library does for us, let's start using it. So I'm going to go to our Downloads folder, and I'm going to open up our as of yet unused Play Game Services folder. And in here, there's a bundle and a framework. And we're going to add both of these into our Xcode project. Just click and drag them in. Again, if you were storing this in a centralized folder that maybe many of your applications were using, you might not want to copy items and keep it as a reference. In my case, I do, just so this is a nice little standalone app. So I'm going to click Finish. And there they are. So I'm going to drag my framework into my Frameworks folder. And, uh, and there you go. Import step is done. There are a few other steps we need to do before we start using this library. The first is kind of an obscure one. I'm going to go into my info.plist file, and uh, I'm going to add a new entry. Right click and do add row. You can also do this by going to like editor, add item. And we're going to call this GPG application ID. And this is the 11 or 12 digit number that is associated with our application. And there's two ways you can get this. The first is if we were to just look at our client ID, it's basically this same number here. So we can just copy over this first numeric portion of our client ID. You can also get this from the Google Play Developer Console. If we were to go into play.google.com slash app slash publish, and guess my number, this number right here, that is also the application ID. So you can get it from either place. Either way, I'm just going to copy it, go back to my info.plist file, and paste it in. There we go. And then the next thing we're going to do is go into this PCH file. This is our pre-compiled header. And I'm going to add an import statement here. I'm going to add play game services slash play game services dot h. I don't know why it doesn't like to indent it, but it doesn't. And this is sort of a nice way of importing this basically into any file that I'm going to use just to avoid having to import it all over the place because at some point you'll probably forget. I suppose this is optional if you want to skip this step and just uh, import it manually in any file that's going to use play game services. Feel free to do that as well. I just find this is easier for me. Next, let's go back to our intro view controller and let's go to our uh, finished with auth handler. And this is basically where we left off. We had our auth object and we haven't done a whole lot else with it. Well, now let's, let's do that. Now, right above our finished with auth method, I'm going to create a new method called sign in to Google Play Games. And this is essentially a method that we will call to set up the Google Play Games library. And generally speaking, we access this through a shared singleton instance, kind of the same way we did with GPP sign in. The name of our singleton class is uh, GPG Manager, GPG here standing for Google Play Games. We're going to access this shared instance. And then we're going to set up our OAuth information with this library by calling sign in. Now there are two arguments that we pass in here. The first is a GPP sign in object. So again, we access this through the singleton method. Shared instance. And then next we pass in a reauthorize handler or block. This is basically a handler that our GPG manager needs to call if auth fails for some reason. Typically, this might happen if, say, your user plays your game for over an hour and their access token has expired. You might have noticed that they all have an expiration time of 3,600 seconds. A less common situation might be that a user has gone into their account settings and revoked their permissions for your game, but your game still attempts to, for instance, submit a score to a leaderboard. So in both those situations, the manager needs to know what to do and in general, the correct thing to do is just try signing the user in again. And so we'll do that by adding in this code. So if requires keychain wipe, which in general means we've gotten a signal that we kind of want to clear out all the old cache data, we can call 
from our shared instance, sign out. And this completely signs the user out from the Google Play Games Manager, which means that it drops all cached information. It does a few other cleanup tasks to ensure that the user really is signed out on this device. But then in either situation, we'll probably want to try signing the user in again. And to do that, we will call GPP sign in shared instance authenticate, which is the same method that gets called when the user clicks the sign in button. And uh, again, if everything goes well, it will pass the results to the GPP sign ins delegate method, which is right below our finish with auth error handler. So again, going back to our most common situation of the user has been playing for an hour and their token is no longer valid and then they attempt to unlock an achievement, our GPG manager will get back a response saying, hey, this token is no longer valid. It will go to its reauthorized handler. In this situation, requires keychain wipe will be false. And it'll say, oh, okay, I guess I'll just authenticate the user again. This will happen silently in the background. It's a silent authentication that should succeed, and we're able to continue like normal. Don't worry if this code doesn't entirely make sense to you. This tends to be kind of boilerplate code that people just kind of copy and paste from our documentation, but it's worth kind of knowing what's going on. And then all it's left to do is call it. And so in our finished with auth error handler, I'm just going to say, you know, if there's no error, let's call sign in to Google Play Games. And that's it. And so let's run this and see what happens. Hey, look at that. That welcome back Todd Kerpelman message. That is the Google Play Games library actually doing a fair amount of work behind the scenes. It's taken my OAuth token. It's used that to get my player profile, my name, my avatar URL, and it's used that to display a little notification message at the top of the screen. And all that gets performed automatically as soon as I call sign in on that shared singleton instance. And that's pretty cool. I didn't even need to know my OAuth information at all. And in fact, if you'll notice, this uh, OAuth2 authentication object doesn't actually get passed into sign in to Google Play Games. Uh, it gets all the auth information needs from this GPP sign-in object, which is kind of cool too. So that's pretty good. We're starting to look more like a real application. Next up, let's add a sign-out button and maybe perform a few cleanup steps. We'll do that in the next lesson.